Well, I would say Beta certainly was very strong. I mean, he you know he was a a real working scientist who also was involved with with the bomb project during the war, and he had, he was chief of theoretical division at Los Alamos, so he was very much responsible for the producing the bombs, and he took that very seriously. So, for all his life, he was seriously involved with trying to establish international control for nuclear bombs, which of course to some extent succeeded and we have still a dangerous world but in many ways not so bad as it might have been. We expected that would be about 50 countries with nuclear bombs by now and we actually have nine, which is still, it's too many, but it's still not so bad as it might have been. So I can give, I give Beta a lot of credit for fighting for international control. And then there was Leo Szilard, who was even more involved in that. Leo, I knew Szilard very well. He was a Hungarian who had the original idea for the bomb, actually. I mean, he was, in a way, the sort of the original inventor of nuclear bombs. And, and he suggested to Einstein, or he actually wrote the letter which Einstein signed to President Roosevelt, telling him about nuclear power, what might come out of it. And, so he was responsible for starting the nuclear project in the United States. And then he tried to get the Truman to avoid dropping the bombs. I mean, he, he tried to reach Truman before the bombs were dropped to persuade Truman not to do it. And because that also failed. But at least he, he understood that was a decisive moment. He was the only one who really tried hard to get the voice to, to say stop to Truman. And he was frustrated, of course, by the secrecy rules that he, well, he couldn't say anything in public. Then afterwards, Szilard was very active in the political movements. And Szilard started something called the Council for a Livable World, which was a political organization to try to get peaceful people into the United States government. And he had a very simple method. He said you could buy these politicians and it was just a matter of giving them some money from time to time to help them to win elections and, and uh, so the important thing was to get p politicians that you could buy very cheaply and so the, he chose to support senators in the United States from small states a senator from a small state has the same authority in the government as a senator for a big state, but he is much cheaper because he doesn't have to spend so much money getting elected. So I actually was encouraged by Szilard to give some money. I, actually, I was not at all wealthy at that point. I was still a student. So I gave a big sum of money for my for my for me I think five hundred dollars to a senator from a small state who happened to be Joe Biden who is was then r r running as a senator for the state of Delaware and is now of course vice president of the United States and maybe running for president himself. So I feel very happy that he's my senator. He's He's the one I helped to get elected when he was young, and that's due to Szilard. Was it a good investment? 
Yes. No, Szilard had a very good eye for that kind of thing. And he did a lot, I think. To, to, he also helped to run the Pugwash meetings, which were international meetings of scientists, where we met with the Russians and the Chinese and other scientists, Hungarians too, and, and uh, could talk politics. I mean, the idea was not to talk science, but to use our scientific friendships in order to talk politics. And so we could actually talk very freely with the Russians about weapons. And they understood, they taught, I mean, and when it came to weapons, we were talking the same language. And so we could actually help the governments. It was much more difficult for the politicians to communicate with each other.